Good evening, Faith Bridge Church. Thank you so much for joining us for our Wednesday Word. And as you can see, uh, I've got a partner with me today, a very dear friend of mine, and we've got something special planned for you. And I just pray that uh, you, you can listen in with an open heart and grow and learn. And together, we can begin to bridge some of this and, and strengthen the body of Christ across this country as, I believe, a tool that God can use to heal this country. I believe the body of Christ and his church is an agency he uses for his power and his healing and his salvation to be spoken to this world. And, and we want to step into that tonight. So uh, I have here with me Keon Thompson, a dear friend of mine, lead pastor of a church in Flint, Michigan. And I know Keon because we worked for uh, about 10 years together installing cable. He's still there, uh, yeah. still calling double duty, but uh, uh, I, I was able to step out and go a different direction, but uh, he's very doing an courageous. amazing work. Say what? Thank you so much. I said that was very I, courageous of you. Uh, <laughs> I really thought you were crazy when you decided you were going to walk away from uh, from Comcast. You know, but I admire your, your courageous faith, man. Uh, and I tell people about you all the time. I appreciate that. Yeah. I talk about you too, and someday we'll actually uh, get you here. And I know we tried that, you know, last year sometime. It just didn't work out right. But uh, I'd like I'd like to get you here and have you uh, in front of our people and share your heart with our our uh, congregation here. But tonight. Uh, we want to kind of set the tone for what this is. Clearly, there's a lot of unrest going on, and uh, and there's the the Black Lives Matter movement, and and in in reality, there's just a lot that uh, me as a white man, but many other ethnicities don't understand about the struggle here, and and I think the first step in getting to more compassion and empathy and action is knowledge that we understand really what's happening and the effect it has on on you, on people we care about and we should care about. Uh, so to set the spiritual tone, we see in the book of Acts, chapter 10, um, the apostle Peter is given a dream uh, yeah. about um, um, animals that they would consider unclean, that That's God right. lets down from heaven and repeatedly tells them, don't, can, don't call unclean what I have made. And, uh, and so Immediately following those visions, he receives the invitation to go to Cornelius' house, who was a Gentile believer. And right. immediately there's kind of this issue because here's a Jewish man being asked to go to a Gentile's house, and God has to deal with his heart first about not calling unclean what he has made. That's and right. so God deals with this division of heart in in racism or culture right away before he even sends Peter. He knows he has to handle it. And for us peering into the word for guidance into our life, we got to take note of this, that, that God has made us all and we should be the last to ever call somebody unclean or unworthy. And so we want to bridge across that and say enough is enough. We've got to step into the spiritual element of what's happening here, that we've got to reach beyond the cultural elements taking place, see it for what it is. It's a spiritual battle in a lot of cases. Let God heal, let God change, let God shape like he did to Peter, so that we can step into the fullness of what he has for us, which is the whole kingdom, the whole body, not just one culture. And so uh, we're setting that tone tonight. We're taking the cues from Peter. He heard the Lord's word and he responded. We want to hear the Lord's word and we want to respond. So Keon, tonight, I'm so blessed that you've taken time out of your schedule to, uh, to just unpack some thoughts with us. And uh, I hope that I do justice with this. And I realize that it's hard to ask you to speak for a whole culture, um, but no doubt you have thoughts on this. And uh, I speak for some who haven't grown up that way and are genuine in wanting to know how can our minds change? How can we learn and grow so we can come beside you instead of standing across an issue and looking at you from across it? How can we come together now? And that's the aim of this night. So thank yeah. you so much for taking your time tonight. Absolutely. And I appreciate you for giving us this opportunity to, sh to share our hearts. And uh, as you as you referenced uh, Brother Peter and um, how God uh, gave Peter instructions uh, on who to go to. And, and not only did God speak to Peter, but he spoke to Cornelius also. That's right. you know, so God doesn't send mixed signals. That's good. Um, that's good. And, and, and God is a God is a, a no respect of person, and that's something that 
um, we have to understand that he is no respect of person and that he doesn't love one person more than he loves another because we're all his children. Um, and I think that what happens with us as well as with Peter being human uh, and being brought up a certain way and in a certain culture um, and, and being a Jew, there were certain things that they were um, basically taught not to indulge in and, um, and, and, and that kind of thing is, is engraved inside of us. Um, it, it becomes a part of our DNA, so to speak. And uh, it's hard sometimes to break away from uh, what's traditional or what's been our norm. Uh, and that's one of the things that, that, that Peter Hart had to be challenged by. Um, and you know what? Sometimes we're, we're like Peter, where as we can feel the tugging of the Lord, uh, telling us to behave a certain way, uh, and, and and sometimes we can we can be contrary to that, um, and there's consequences to us not following what God said for us to follow, um, and I hope that in this in this season that we're in, we all can learn uh, and and be open to what God is saying to us or trying to show us, um, particularly in, in in the middle of a pandemic, um, it's important for us to try to hear what God has to say. I never would have imagined on the on the heels or still in the midst of this pandemic that we'd be facing two battles on two fronts, yeah. and uh, but here we are. We find ourselves yeah. in the midst of it. Yeah, we're going to get through. That's it. Yeah, God to bring us this far to bring us this far. That's right. You got that right. And you know what's funny? When I talked to you yesterday about this idea, I I didn't even know anything that others had done these these kind of sit downs. So yeah. in, in my mind, that was testament to what the spirit is doing to those who are listening. Uh, we saw Stephen Furtick and John Gray do it. I didn't go back yeah. and watch it, but you're the first one to tell me about it. And yeah, uh, another friend night. of mine uh, did it as well, but I didn't know that he did. So we see the spirit just kind of moving in this direction. I'm so glad that we're able to jump on it. Yeah, I think that, I think that this, I think that um, uh, if there's going to be a unification, it has to start in, in, in the body, within the body of Christ, because it's, it's, it's one church, That's you right. know, uh, and Christ isn't coming back for uh, a separated church. He's not coming back for two churches. He's coming back for one church, you That's know, right. and we all are, we, we, we're all a part of that. Um, and his prayer before he left earth was that, that God will make us one, Yep. you know, and so that, I think that it's important for us to uh, try and, and bridge these, uh, these gaps that we, that we have that separate us from one another. Amen. One of those bridges uh, that you, you speak about is, is as simple as just culture and upbringing. Uh, That's right. Maybe, yes. you know, places you live, right? That's um, right. Yes. I can't help that I was born white. Clearly, I can't help the places I was born into um, and, and the upbringing, you know, that, that I was in. But I can help if I choose to grow through and grow beyond. And that's what I want to do. So tonight as, 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 a, as a Caucasian Christian pastor, I, I want to grow and I want to try to understand because I realize in my own self, there's blind spots that I just can't grasp because of right. my upbringing. And so I'm going to lean into you tonight. And I hope Faithbridge Church, those of you who find yourself similar in similar places to me, that you lean in tonight too and you listen and we learn together. And, and uh, Keon, if there's anything that you'd like to ask in return that maybe I, I know speaking for a whole group of people is very difficult, but if I could somehow articulate a response or something you don't get, maybe I can try too. We can both have this dialogue. Um, but let, let's just jump right in. Um, sure. And so the first question, I know it's a heavy hitter and I sent you these ahead of time, but yeah. I know this first one could go a bazillion different directions and asking you to boil it down to something that's a, that's a concise answer might be tough, but here's the question. What do you wish that we could understand about the struggle for African Americans in this country? You know, this, it's important to understand that this didn't, this, this struggle that we have didn't happen overnight. Um, uh, that, and many may not know that that we didn't we didn't come to America, our our ancestors didn't come to America by choice. 
Mm. Uh, there was some type of um, uh, agreement or transaction made that 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 sent uh, millions of, of of slaves into this country in, in 1619. You know, and so from mm -hmm. 1619 uh, up until 2020, um, really, we we have been African Americans or uh, blacks have been in 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 an oppressed state. Um, and so, what I really want, what what I would suggest is just try and be understanding, try and be understanding that. Um, um, that really, when, when we say black lives matter, every life matters. And, 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 and you know, uh, I, I would much more rather, um, we know that all lives matter, black lives matter. Saying black lives matter doesn't mean that it matters any more than anyone else's life. But what we want is to be considered equal. That's the thing. It's, it's okay to hear our, um, our white brothers and sisters say with us or sing and shout with us that black lives matter, but we want, we want equality. We really want the same opportunities. I don't want a handout. Um, I don't want to be given an advantage. I want the same opportunity. That's it, the same opportunity. Um, I just want you to open the door and I'll do the work myself. And uh, I think that that's one of the things that I, um, I feel like that's important um, to, to be considered equal. And, 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 um, and, and, and obviously, you know, what, what we see, that's not the case. That's how we feel. We, we don't feel that we have equal opportunity. And it's something that we've been fighting for for a long time. I hope that's kind of like one of the things that can kind of answer the question that you have. Yeah. Um, and we and want opportunities as people. And it brings to mind the idea that some would say, well, we've come a long way. It's not what it was. Yeah. But my, my thought and my response that would maybe fall into where you're, you're looking at it would say, yeah, but it's not where it should be. Um, <laughs> there's still a lot. And in some cases, some, some communities that may not be as bad, you know, and they may not have that struggle, but the reality is a lot of communities still do. And it shouldn't be still there is what we're trying to say. And, and I think that's what you're saying. Let's, doesn't matter how far we've come, we're, we're not to the end yet. Right. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you the, I'll give you an example of this, you know, um, we want equal opportunity and 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 also when we when when certain uh, for example when certain crimes are committed um we we see that that lighter sentences are given to um white persons who create who commit the same crimes that black people commit mm -hmm. um, and you know for example um uh, I'll, g I'll give you an example where there was a lady who, who who put her daughter into the wrong school district. She wanted her child to have a better opportunity. Um, so she put her young daughter in, a, in, in the wrong school district, and she got sentenced to like five or ten years mm. for making that decision. And then when we look on television and we see um, uh, white people who paid a half a million dollars for their two daughters to... Uh, get into USC and they only do four months in prison, which one is the greater, which one is the greater offense? Mm. This person paid $500,000 for their child to go to a college versus a woman who is poor trying to give her daughter a better opportunity and put her in the wrong school district. So it's it's that those it's those types of things that we see, and there are there are a number of other examples. We we just want to we want equality, and um, uh, and, and 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 really that's a big deal for us. Um, we don't see it enough. And and you know I think some might argue, well, it, you weren't brought over on a ship, right? You you weren't, but but you could say, but. You know, you've heard the stories, right? You've you've grown up with that culture. You felt the pain of the previous generations, and and Absolutely. you still see it, 
right? And so yeah. um, I, I think that might be another element that, that somebody in my position might go, yeah, but you know, why are you so bitter? You, you weren't the one in a cotton field. And I, excuse me for being uh, blunt with what, oh, the way no, I'm saying it. I'm were. just, I, I'm saying these kind of things, you know, I've heard. And, yeah. but the reality is, you know, I'm sure your grandma, you know, told you stories and uh, of yes. great grandparents and things that they yes. went through and the Jim Crow laws and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure that that was ingrained in you as something that, that you couldn't just shake off. Consider this, in, in, in 1863, Abraham um, signed the, the, the Emancipation Proclamation, right? Whereas it, it freed the slaves. And, and 1865 was really when um, they abolished slavery uh, totally. Um, then you had what was called the 13th Amendment. That's when 1865 is when the 13th Amendment was, was, was engrafted. And, but the language in the 13th Amendment said that you couldn't keep a person in slavery unless they committed a crime. That was that, if you, if you read the 13th Amendment, that's, that's its language. So what you have there is a, you have a great area where what happened in the South was, because you gotta consider, you got 4,000 people who, who have been made free that right there basically would, would have bankrupt the South because it was free, it was slave labor mm -hmm. that kept that economy going. So here you have now um, a whole bunch of free people who ain't who's who have never been free before. All right, if you if you count the if you count the years from 1619 uh, to 1865, you're looking at like 245 years almost of slavery on top of slavery. So here it is, you got these, a whole bunch of free people and everybody in the South wasn't rich. You had poor blacks and you had poor whites. So now what happens when you have these, these poor blacks free, they, be, they become, they're, they're in direct competition with poor whites. So what has to happen, and this is history, what has to happen is they come up with ways um, to criminalize being black. And, 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 and they come up with ways to criminalize being black, so they come up with all these different laws. Uh, and each state and each, and each city and each county had their own laws. So what they would do is they would make the behavior of blacks criminal. For example, if, if, if a farmer was walking on the side of the trail ran, railroad tracks, that was a crime. Mm. So if, if, if a black person was, was drunk uh, out in the open, it was a crime. If a black person uh, talked loud in a company of whites, that was a crime. And so what they did was they criminalized black behavior. Mm. This, this is, and, and so what happens now is you put, you put these black people back in prison. And after you put these back, blacks back in prison, they, come up, they came up with what they call criminal leasing. And what does criminal leasing do? Criminal leasing allows for these men and women who are in prison to basically, basically become slaves all over again. It's slavery by another name. And so what you, what you had was mass incarceration mass incarceration. So what happens? The population of the jails exploded with black people because they had to find a way to get this free labor. This mm -hmm. is history. This is history. And so when you look at the pop when you look at the population of, of of the prisons and the majority of them is black, then you can conclude, you can conclude that black people just were criminal just by nature mm. just based off of the numbers of the people who were in prison that right. were white versus the people that were in prison that were black so so what you have now is a system mm -hmm. you have a system um that sends blacks straight to prison for uh misdemeanor crimes 
And so all you, what you have is that that just goes on and on and right. on. They had, they had criminal leasing, criminal wow. leasing that, that allowed blacks um, to be used for slave wager for pay. And, it, and, and it's all documented. And so, wow. so, what you, so what you have now is a system that, that never goes away. And then if you take and, 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 and if you take and you'll find that they had these, they had these law, they had these laws called uh, uh, vagrancy laws. And what that, what that did was if a man couldn't prove that he had a job, then they can put him in prison. Mm. So, so basically um, just being black was, was was criminalized and that that's something that that's systemic man and it, it goes on and you got the Jim Crow laws and you got um uh the bill that was passed in the 90s and and that that uh three strikes you out and so what we have is a system that it, oppresses black people man and it looks like it's just the same cyclical thing it's, you know, it's the same thing based on your history. That's how, that's how you're seeing it. And when you open that, like that's history. I wasn't taught in my, you know, in my schools, you know what I'm I saying? I had to study this to find out, you and, know, and consider this in 1896, uh, it was called Plessy versus Ferguson. Ferguson. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they basically, uh, the Supreme court held up segregation. Mm -hmm. All of these things, um, whereas we were, trying to make progress mm. uh, blacks not being able to vote or or so many different laws or, or requirements were thrown at blacks to have an opportunity to vote um, it basically turned the south back to mm. the way it was um, and it's a fight that we've had since you know we've been here and and uh, to see the racial profiling today it looks right. a lot like what they would have done, looking for a reason to bring them Absolutely. back in so I can get free labor back out of them, right? Absolutely. Think about this, and I, I, I'll, 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 I'll ease up on it. Think about this. Um, based off of the being criminal, criminalizing being black now, you can, you can, you can do your research. There's a book called um, uh, Slavery by a New Name. There's even a documentary that you can watch on YouTube. I challenge you to watch it. It's only about an hour and thirty minutes. It's a, it it it, uh, it doesn't have any it doesn't have hardly any profanity in it. It's a it's a documentary and, and, and it, it details slavery by another name. I challenge you to I challenge you all to, to just Google it and, and take awesome. a chance at watching it. Um, but it gives you details and how the system was built mm. um, and it works today. The, wow. the justice system uh, back in those days, and and all of this, this is just history repeating itself. Mm. All right, it's history repeating itself. Back in those days, um, uh, they had they had their own um, judges that would just convict men and women for, and they were innocent innocent of the crimes they were being accused of. So it's it's one of those things that um, has been going on. Um, oh for years and years, hundreds of years. Now, you know, so, to be fair, um, I realized, you know, just in talking to other people that not every community in our country treats people that way. Not every single one, absolutely. right? Absolutely. There are places that, that don't tend to, to display this same issue, right? But the reality is in our country today, with what we know and how we understand, uh, especially from a faith perspective, there should be nowhere in this country that we should go and find this this issue. Uh, you know, it's it's amazing. It's amazing that you say that because, um, you know, even in the church, and, and I love God, and um, and I, I'm challenged by um, I'm challenged by some of the silence, and I appreciate you for not being silent. I'm challenged by some of the silence that our fellow Christians, Christian brothers and sisters. Um, that they have. I have a good friend of mine who belongs to a, um, a, a large Caucasian church here in Genesee County in Grand Blank, and and uh, he he went on he went on Instagram and he expressed how he was disappointed. He felt like his pastor had failed him because he didn't he didn't address the issue. He didn't make he didn't say 
that in their church, uh, they don't condone um, the behavior that was displayed on television. We're, we're, we're against racism. And if you're, if you have a race, if you're a racist or if you're not, if you're against equality, you know, um, then you have, a, you have an opportunity now to lead a church. That's what he wanted to hear. Mm. Uh, but, you know, and, and, and the pastor may not have, didn't have to necessarily go to that extent in his expression, but he didn't say anything at all. And it, it, it hurt him. It hurt him because uh, he, he submitted himself under that man's authority and he, he tithes and he serves the ministry. And he just was kind of, he just was kind of hurt by it, you know? Um, so I understand there's a, there's a great challenge um, for, um, for ministers to, um, um, to take that kind of risk. Yeah. So I, I applaud you. Pastor Flint, for, well, thank uh, you. Courageous. You know, and, and it's really that end uh, of, of getting us to understand what it is we can do. I think from my perspective, there's, there's a lot more that, that stand with you. They just don't know what to do, right? How do we, how do we understand? How do we move from this point to engage this battle in a way that's right? Um, clearly we, neither one of us agree with destroying people's property to get a point oh, across. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I look back to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s writings uh, from the jail in, in uh, was it Birmingham? And yeah. the, the way he talks about um, doing it the right way is staggering from a man who's sitting behind bars. And, and, and so from me, from my perspective, I think that's the idea that we've got to get across. It's not about going out here and destroying the city we live in. That makes no right. sense. Um, so I, I don't think either of us would agree with that, right? But what is it we can do the right way? And that, that's where I think some of us struggle just a bit to find that moment and to find you know, that what, avenue. What we, what we need, what we need is, is your voice, you know, because you, you have this, you have this, um, this privilege um, I had a, I had a conversation with a, um, a police officer. He's a black man. He, he lives in Wyoming. Most of the people who he police are, are Caucasian. And, um, and, 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 and so what I said to him was the, the no that a black man says to a police officer is received differently when that same no that a, that a white man gives the police officer mm. um, because he's more apt to listen to the white man's no versus the the black man's no. The black man's no is resistant. Um, and so, but um, what we need more than anything now is the voice of our privileged brothers. You know what I mean? And you're not, and Pastor Clint, you, you, you didn't ask for this privilege. Right. In our opening, in our opening, you you said you you didn't you you couldn't choose the color of your skin, nor did I, um, and so. But since there is a privilege um, that our, our white brothers have and white sisters have, uh, if you lend that voice, um, it'll it'll affect change. It'll 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 affect change. I think a little bit more speedily because sometimes when we're using our voice and we're pumping our fist um it's, it's looked at as a threat mm -hmm. um, you know why while, while we were in flint they had a a a, a, a a rally or a protest here on miller road and i'll be perfectly honest with you um you know i wasn't i wasn't in the crowd really being loud and boisterous with my voice saying black lives matter and and, 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 but, but, but I, but, but I looked across to my left and I looked across to my white, my right. And I saw, uh, white male and females screaming at the top of their lungs, you know, saying black lives matter and putting themselves out front and in harm's way. And mm -hmm. you can see that if you look at the television and, you know, and it's, and it, it really, uh, for me, it sucked, it sucked me in that energy as much as I wasn't, I was more so just there for support. Um, I was I was inspired by seeing people of all ethnic groups chanting the same thing, you know. And so we, if we had more of that, um, and I think that I think that based off of what we're seeing now, there's a whole lot of people in your generation and in my generation, and the generations that are that are 
that come after us uh, who are just fed up with some of the things that, that we, we're seeing on television. So it's your voice. Okay. Your voice. That actually answers one of our other questions. So I, I appreciate that. And, you know, to tag onto that, there's that phrase that says, or that quote, and I can't remember who to attribute it to, but it says, all, all that it takes for evil to flourish is for good men to do nothing. Absolutely. Um, right. And I think we've had good men and women who, who have done nothing, not so much out of lack of desire, but just maybe ignorance, uh, and not in a bad way, just not knowing what to do or what the right steps are. And so if we can get a generation, like you said, your generation, mine, and the ones after us, our families to say, you know what? we're going to do what we can and we're going to do it the right way. That's the yeah. key. We're going to do it the right way. You know, and here is, here is, here is, here is one of the things I'll say, pastor, you know, even with like, um, starting the church, we, we launched the impact family church in October of 2000 in uh, October of 2014. And, um, one of the things that sometimes we do is we want to wait for the perfect time. Mm. We want to wait for the perfect time and we want everything to be perfect when we do it. Mm -hmm. And it'll never be a perfect time. That's right. You may never, you, you may not, Pastor Clint, ever be able to see it perfectly. But as long as it's genuine and it's sincere, let love be without dissimulation. The scripture says that to all of us, abhor that which is evil. Uh, mm -hmm. Romans 12 and 9, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with what? Brotherly love That's and right. honor prefer one another. Right. That's, that's what the apostles said. And right. Even Peter, even Paul himself had to challenge Peter um, because of his behavior. That's you right. know what I'm saying? So, 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 so it doesn't have to be perfect when you say it, as long as it's coming from a place in your heart. That's good. Then that's what matters. That's it good. don't have to be perfect. It just has to be from the heart. Yeah. You know, I appreciate your, uh, just your candid nature and you know the transparency you're using i know some of these things can't be easy to talk about no, uh, in no. this in this kind of setting and because it is real and it's raw um yeah. but i i think we need it you know we do and i'm speaking about myself i need it i need to hear this because uh last year i read through a long walk to freedom Nelson mandela's uh, autobiography yes. and uh, biography and he uh, i'm telling you that shook my world to think that they were pressing in the racial division while we were fighting to try to relieve it and even yet today we still obviously experience it and so the that book changed my my heart and my perspective on a lot of things and that's why i'm throwing myself into uh learning and these kind of dialogues because i think it's it's needed and so i appreciate you um doing that um let me you know what, go ahead. Let me if I could say this, you know, and what what I what I understand is this, you know, Pastor, because the people who you pastor trust you. They trust you and 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 they trust your heart. And so, and that's important because at us as spiritual leaders, um, we we have an opportunity to speak to the hearts of the people who we pastor and shepherd um multiple times a week. And, um, and, and, and when, when we don't, when we don't use our voice, um, to speak to, uh, the necessary, uh, change, then we fail the people all together. I think that that's what we do when we don't say something that the things that we should say. That's good. And, and I think us as, as pastors, we need to be that voice in the middle of the storm. I think, um, yeah. you know, and, and you and I know it's not our voice. It's the voice of the Lord uh, as he places that anointing on us for the life and the call we have. But yeah. part of that anointing is to stand in the midst of the storm. You know, I think about Paul in the shipwreck. You know, he's dealing with all of the guys on the boat. That's right. And he's trying to trying to get him to understand, look, if you stay, you'll be saved. Listen That's to me, right. you know. And Except you ride on the ship. Yeah, they're literally in the midst of a storm, and he's the one standing there trying to bring hope. And I think that's our call in situations like this where we've got to be able to see through the fog. You know, there's lots of other issues taking place, but that's not this issue, right? There's right. this issue is different than the people rioting that, that may have an agenda that's different than this. And they're just opportunistic right now. That's, right. that's not the same thing that you and I are talking about right now. And we've got to see through some of that and be able to steer our people in wisdom and the spirit of God. And that's what I'm trying, trying to do. It's my heart. 
And um, yeah. so let's, uh, it, you know, right along with that as pastors, in what way does all of this affect your view of the body of Christ? Um, you shared with me that, that statement that your buddy made to you about um, yeah. not understanding. And so, you know, do you share that? I mean, it, that's something you're hearing. Um, here is, here is my, here is, here is, here's where I am. Um, because I have a whole lot of, of, of um, I have a whole lot of, uh, and I, I hate using this word, Caucasian white. I have a whole lot of people who, who, who aren't black that I'm, I'm inspired by. And I, I mean, John Maxwell is one of my favorite uh, persons. Uh, Craig Rochelle, Brian Houston, Stephen Furtick. Um, I, I've, I've been inspired by um, uh, Jetson Franklin. I've been inspired by Jimmy Swagger. And the list goes on of, of the great men of God um, who are televangelists, people who are who are, are known all over the place. And I know there are some others who are great who, who just don't have the television view um, that these who I just mentioned have. Um, um, so, but with all that being said, and um, the, the, in the church, for, for me, I think that um, it's a challenge. It's a challenge because um, if, 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 if we can speak to so many other things as ministers of the gospel, um, as it relates to what's right and what's wrong, um, I think that I think that it's important for us to speak to it in its totality. And um, when 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 we see that there are some who who won't address it, it's a challenge. It's a challenge um, um, because one thing about Christ, he wasn't Democrat nor Republican. He wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't on any. He wasn't on anybody's side. Uh, he was, he was, he was, he was for what was right. Um, and the only people that had a problem with Christ was the religious people mm -hmm. um, who didn't want to see things change for the better. Um, and so I think that um, in, a, in a, a, us as a church being one uh, means that we have to, we have to uh, mean the same thing. We can say it in a different way but we have to mean the same thing. And that is to love one another, regardless of what our color, what, regardless of, 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 of our backgrounds. And, and we don't judge, we, should, we shouldn't judge people by the color of their skin, but by, the, by their character. That's important. Um, uh, and I think that that's, that that's one of the things that we, we have to do in, in order to keep the unity and the spirit and the bond of peace, you know, because we're all one body and, and the hand can't say that it doesn't want to do what it's supposed to do. You can't expect the foot to do what the, the hand's job if we're whole, you know. And so for us to be whole and for us to be one, we have to work together in unity. We have to work together in unity. Two is better than one. That's Three, right. A threefold cord is not easily broken. That's what we have to be. We have to be one. We have to be one. And you know what's funny? Um, and this is just a silly silly thing I'll share with you, but I just, I just bought some, uh, some different colored buttons and cases for my PlayStation remotes. And I really enjoy the contrast look. So I made a white case with the, the black buttons and I made a black case with the white buttons. Yeah. And I absolutely love the contrast. It, it just absolutely. appeals to me. And you know, yeah. I, think, I think that's something we've got to capture in the body of Christ, that the contrast yeah. of us is what makes it so beautiful. Absolutely, being able to being able to appreciate the the diversity. Can I share this with you? I, Lauren Dangle is one of the most beautiful singing women that I've ever heard before in my life. And I'll, I'll tell you this, man. Um, I, I bought her CD when, when, when we were buying CDs. Right, I don't buy CDs anymore. I'm streaming all of my music or downloading it, but. But I, I, I was so excited because, in all honesty, it was the first Christian artist CD that I purchased. And I jumped in my cable truck. I was leaving the Family Christian store. And I'm feeling real good because I even got it on a discount. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say to me that I haven't even scratched the surface yet. Mm. I'm saying I haven't scratched the surface. And, <laughs> and, and what he was saying was... 
you know, your ways are so beneath my ways and your thoughts are so beneath my thoughts. And, 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 and it's like, you know, it's so much more uh, than what I had been exposed to in my black church experience. You understand what I'm saying? It's so much more to it. Um, it, it just like um, uh, if, if, you've, if you've been only cultured in one way, you have to understand that there is so much more that to be experienced. And I think that people are afraid of that type of blend and diversity. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, to be able to worship together. You well, know. you know, back to that love word, you know, there's a song by DC Talk and it, it literally is titled Love is a Verb, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and, and we know the word tells us that perfect love casts out fear. That's right. And so we can combat that fear of difference and fear of different cultures by choosing love and letting the love of Christ uh, yeah. stir within us and, and be pleasantly surprised at what that adds to our lives. I think God has a plan in that. Like, like he told you, you just scratched the surface of the depth of what this all is. Yeah. And that's, what, that's, that's what I'd love to see. Uh, heaven on earth, the kingdom of God is here working among us. Why is it so divided? Well, that's the sin problem still in existence, but by the glory of God, we can be walked away from it in the power of his presence and the love of Christ. So that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, I, 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 I think that it. I think it can happen. Um, but we have to. We have to be able to let our guards down. Um, in the church, we have to mm. be able to uh, want reconciliation. That's good. Um, you know, and and as much as um, you you have the white church and you have the black church experience, and and one. One may feel one way that they do better than another, uh, but we got this over here that we do that y'all can't match, and 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 really shouldn't be a competition. It should be, how can I glean from you to to level up? Right. What can I glean from you to level up and just appreciate one another? Um, and, and 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 you know, and 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 even in the church there is a level of segregation that we have to try and root out yeah, uh, good. among the brethren. It, it's important, you know, um, to do that. And th th there's so much more deeper we can go. Uh, but I don't know if it would be, um, I don't think that would help this conversation right now. Um, but there's so much more we can talk about. Um, yeah. But the, the primary thing for us, man, is, 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 is to, to be able to, um, share our voice um, and, 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 be, and love one another, man. Let the love be real. Let the love be real. So, so Faith Bridge Church and anybody else watching, if you're struggling in that area, let me challenge you to lean in to the presence of God. Yeah. Because where we are weak, he is strong. And yeah. if we're struggling to find that love, uh, we only need to go to one place because he's carrying it and he, he will, he will do the work on our hearts that will radically change who we are. And that's desperately what we need to get over some of these hurdles. And so we got to refocus. We got to get back in this thing because it's not about competition, right? When we can lay aside competition, listen, we can start winning. All right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Ironically in this world, we look at competition as the, 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 the preceding element to winning. But in the kingdom world, I think when we lay aside competition and work together, we start winning. That's literally where we start winning. And uh, so lean into the presence of God and, and let, let him heal. And, and these words, Pastor Keon, have been just so amazing. And I know, like you said, there's so much more we could talk about. We could make a series out of this and just Absolutely, make topics, yes. you know. Definitely. Um, but uh, I'd love that idea. What's that? Yeah, I said that would be a bad idea. It wouldn't be, you know. No, <laughs> not at all. Yeah. Maybe so. we can start a YouTube channel or something. <laughs> I don't know. Break do down us. different yeah. topics, looking at yeah. it from different angles, and Absolutely. start working together. It'd be a great idea, you know. Um, I, I, I say, I'll say this, and I know we're, we're wrapping up, Pastor. Um, um, you know, you and I, man, we stood side by side. You know, our wives were. We, we, it was like we were in competition with each other, you know. Like, <laughs> 
You had, a, I had a baby, you had a baby. Yeah. In the same year, your wife had a miscarriage and my wife had a miscarriage. And uh, you prayed for us and then we prayed for you, whichever way it was. Yeah. And then while we're pregnant again, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And we just went through the whole process, oh, man. And, uh, and you got the twins. <laughs> that's right, you know. And so, you know, like, and even and even this year, man, um, both you and I both, we suffered the loss of... Um, Loved of, ones. Of, of parents, man, your yes, mom and, and, and my dad. And, yeah. um, um, and it's, it's not 2020 has not been the easiest year for anybody. Um, people are without jobs. Uh, people are hurting. We, we can't, we can't, um, we can't gather like we, like we're, we used to, we're accustomed to gathering. So we can't offer that, that physical touch and mm-hmm. love and support like we need um, especially if you're a person whose love language is physical touch. That's right. And, and you want to, and pastors, we love to hug the people who, we, right. who, who we pastor and we, we, we shepherd, you know, and to not be able to do that is a, it's a great challenge for us because we can, we get to say hi on the screen. <laughs> That's a great challenge for us because we really want to be in, we want to be, we want to smell like the sheep. You understand right. what I'm, yeah. as pastors yep. talk, we want to smell like the sheep. We want to, we want to know how you feel. All right. You, you know what it's like to go home after service and you smell like that old lady's perfume. You know what it is, right? You got a you got a you got a mark on your shirt. You might have on your your, your crisp white shirt, and, and they got they got makeup or makeup or, or yeah. whatever it is on your shirt. And it's got to go to the cleaners oh. now. And we miss that kind of stuff, man. So and I don't know when we're going to be able to get back to it. I, I don't know when we're going to be able to get back to it. Wisdom says. Um, to wait till uh, a later time. And so we take this time now to take and, and refocus ourselves. We take this time to recreate ourselves. Mm-hmm. It's this time um, to to try and get an understanding because wisdom is the principal thing. And, uh, therefore, get wisdom. But in all you're getting, get an understanding. Yep. So please, brothers and sisters, have an understanding heart. Please understand that that the, the, the anger that... Um, that you see displayed on television uh, isn't something that happened overnight. Uh, I didn't wake up and I didn't just wake up and I'm angry. Um, it's something that um, that's been brewing for um, 400 years. Um, and, 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 and right now what we have to do is pray that, that, that the peace of God uh, can rest rule and abide in our hearts. We have to pray that, that justice, um, um, will, will be given to um, those who break the law, mm-hmm. and 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 that 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 peace will abide. Um, because we don't we don't, fighting you can't fight and build at the same time. So when we fight each other, uh, we're really tearing each other down, and and nobody makes progress that way. That's right. Uh, and so please love any what I want from more than anything in this world is to be loved and to be understood. That's it. That's good. And, you know, Pastor Ken, I love you, man. I know. Yeah, Pastor, I love you too, brother. You know, yes. it's been over 10 years since I've been gone, but I feel like God just knit us together somehow. And uh, so yeah. I stand with you. I love you. If, yeah, if you ever like need you anything from me, um, you know, I'm right at the other end of that call. And, yeah. uh, we're praying for you. We're praying for Impact mm-hmm. Family Church. We know God's using you to do some amazing things. But very much. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and let them go, but hang with me for one oh, second. Man. So okay. thank you, everybody, for being with us uh, yeah. tonight. We, uh, we pray that this takes root in us and we begin to walk the path together of healing and progress uh, and, and down that path so that we can get where we need to go together. Uh, we love you guys. Thank you so much. Have an incredible evening, and we'll see you this weekend. All right. God bless.